Hey guys, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and well, there's been a lot of talk recently about Origin, especially with Battlefield 5 and we've got some really good content there. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you click on the weird little eye above my head. But I want to talk about Origin and why they are absolute assholes. Um, essentially why they're assholes to everyone, not just sort of consumers, but even to press. So for anyone who's actually watched some of our Battlefield 5 videos that we've done, you'll see that we have a press copy a press copy of Battlefield 5, but that doesn't come without its own problems. Let's jump in and take a look. So um, I'm going to be honest, this is probably going to sound like I'm a little bit butthurt, but I am, but I'm not the only one. There's lots of people out there who are in exactly the same situation. And yes, I am being a little bit cryptic about this, but all will be revealed as the video goes on. So what I actually found on the sort of the last couple of days on Twitter is a lot of people were complaining about origin and hardware changes. Now this isn't actually going to apply to a lot of people because a general consumer is going to build up a computer and off they go. They're going to play Battlefield 5 and they're going to enjoy it. And they're going to enjoy it, especially if they've got an RTX card with all of these kind of new improved frames that uh, everyone's able to get in Battlefield 5. Again, check the little eye above my head and you'll see exactly what that video is all about. But for someone like a reviewer, the problem we have is we build up a test rig and you can see the test rig I've got behind me. You know, it's a little bit kind of janky with the water cooling and everything, but it does the trick. Uh, we did that for another video where we uh, made the i9-9900K a little bit wet. <sighs> Can't believe I just said that. Either way, what we found is that a lot of people complaining uh, on the review circuit. So not just ourselves, but there was Steve from Hardware Unboxed and a couple of other people, sort of YouTubers and tech reviewers, who were finding that when they were actually changing the graphics card, it was limiting you to five changes. So what we were actually finding is, as soon as you changed that fifth graphics card, you went to boot up and it would give you this wonderful error, which didn't really actually make any sense. And upon contacting EA support, well, they were about as much help as a chocolate teapot. Uh, basically, what we found was they were telling people that it was a hardware lock. It was a timer and it would be time for 24 hours. Now, for anyone who knows the kind of way that eTechnics works is I do all the videos here and we have a written reviewer, Pete, who lives about 240 miles away and he does all of his written testing. So he does his own testing while I do my own testing. Obviously, we use the same EA account for Battlefield 5. So as soon as he kind of finishes with his, I went to boot up mine and lo and behold, that wonderful error was bestowed upon me. Now that created huge problems and I could understand that maybe if you had a consumer copy of Battlefield 5, but you can clearly see on our screen, ours is a press review copy. So how is that any different? Yes, I did manage to get the code from a different source. I didn't actually buy it like we typically would with games, but I don't know, it gives you the information and the, I guess the precedent that you'd see it. You'd see that it says press review copy on it and maybe that hardware lock wouldn't come into, into fact. So what we actually found is there is a way around it. Now, again, it's a little bit janky, but we're gonna show you exactly how to get around this, I guess, this problem, this issue. And yes, Origin, fuck you. Okay, so the first step really to getting this working is to head into your BIOS. Now, what you actually want to do is you wanna have your graphics card fitted, but no cable plugged into it. Instead, you want a secondary display cable plugged into the rear IO of your motherboard. So what we've actually got is a HDMI plugged into the rear IO and then a display port plugged in, uh, or actually not plugged into the graphics card, but we will be plugging that in shortly. Once you're in the BIOS, uh, we can click on advanced and then we can go to system agent configuration. Within there, you want to go to graphics configuration and basically you want to make sure that your primary display is set to the CPU graphics. Obviously, you do have a choice of auto, CPU graphics or PCIe. So we want to set that to CPU graphics so that we know that it's going to boot from the onboard graphics uh, as opposed to the graphics card. And then iGPU multi-monitor, uh, you want this enabled so that we can use both the integrated and the discrete graphics uh, for multi-monitor output. Even though we're only actually using one monitor, uh, we're kind of going to trick Windows into thinking that it's two because we have two different uh, uh, inputs to it. So we've got the HDMI input, which is connected to the iGPU, and then we've got the DisplayPort input, which will be connected to the to the graphics card. Once you've done that, you can continue to uh, save BIOS and get into Windows. So once you boot into Windows, uh, you can see that we're using a 4K display, but well, you can see it doesn't actually look like 4K. So the resolution 
uh, at the moment is kind of all over the place. Now, if you actually give this some time, uh, let everything sort of load up and that, give it some time, uh, what should happen is the driver should go from the NVIDIA drivers that it's used to loading up with uh, to the iGPU drivers. Um, so yeah, we've got a few things loading up here for our NAS and uh, other bits of software that we kind of frequently use. I've uh, got a bit of Spotify as well, so I'm just gonna close all this stuff down. And yeah, we're just gonna wait for the resolution to sort of kick in a little bit. So now that we've kind of, you know, got everything how we want it, everything's now in 4K, uh, we can proceed to load up Origin. So once Origin's open, uh, you can see that we've got Battlefield 5. So we'll go to my game library, Battlefield 5, and we are pretty much ready to play it. But what we want to do is we want to switch over the connections. So this basically involves putting in the DisplayPort cable now into our graphics card and then actually going into the multi-monitor support within NVIDIA settings and basically tricking it into thinking that we have multi-monitors. Even though it's all going for the same monitor, it doesn't know that. So we're gonna do that and then uh, we're basically good to go. Okay, so now that we've got the cable plugged in, what we wanna do is right click on the desktop and display settings. And as you can see, it thinks that there's uh, two displays now. So um, there's no point if we click on identify, it would just tell us that this is one because it thinks the other one is somewhere else connected into something else. So um, number two is basically um, the one that goes through the RTX card. So what we actually need to do is we need to duplicate to start with the display on number one, which is what we're looking at right now, the HDMI, to display number two, which is the same display, but through DisplayPort. So to do this, we just scroll down and you can see multiple displays. And at the moment it's extend these displays, whereas what we wanna do is duplicate. Everything will look a little bit janky to start with. Obviously you can change your resolution back again. So we're gonna change that to 4K. And then once we've done that, open everything back up again. So you can see that we're duplicating the displays. Okay, so now that we have everything duplicated, you can see uh, clearly it does show one and two. So what we actually then want to do is switch over the display from the first one, which is the HDMI, to the second one, which is the display port. So I'm just gonna reach over. and set it to DisplayPort, because what would happen is if um, if we actually tried to do it and turned off Display 1, what would actually happen is you wouldn't be able to click the little button when we uh, put the display only onto Display 2 that says, do you want to keep these settings? So what we're going to do now is go back down to multiple displays. Instead of duplicate, show only on 2, which we know is obviously the DisplayPort connection. And we wouldn't have seen this before and it would have reverted back and we would have been frantically pressing the source button to try and get where we wanted. Keep changes and then we can close that. And then basically we are done. We can click on play, it will launch the game. And we technically in the eyes of EA and Origin haven't made any hardware changes whatsoever. So there you have it guys. Yes, it's a little bit of a janky way, but at the moment it's a foolproof way. So there was actually a different way of doing it before, which involves sort of logging into Origin with your setup, then going into offline mode, changing over the graphics card, and then putting it back in offline mode. But um, for some reason it doesn't work every single time, and half the time it actually tells us to go back into online mode. So yeah, that created its own sort of set of problems. Whereas at the moment, every time we've tried to do this, which is you know, had a, like I say, 100% success rate, it's been absolutely fantastic. But now that I've made this video, I can guarantee that Origin and EA are actually going to stop this and they're gonna be absolute assholes about it and uh, we're, we're gonna be back to square one again. My biggest complaint is not that they do this because I understand why they do this. They class it as a security measure which doesn't really make sense because, I mean, if anyone's going to steal your Origin account, are they really just going to play Battlefield 5 or any other game within Origin and start changing over their hardware constantly? I guess the only way I can see that it's going to be affected is if someone able, is able to get your Origin account and maybe they pass that information around over the internet so lots of people are logging in. Then, yeah, as soon as it gets to 5, there's your problem. But to be honest, if someone does log into your Origin account, you generally get an email telling you about it. So again, I kind of feel it's a little bit redundant. So yeah, I guess now that I've made this video, Origin are probably going to clamp down even more on it. So, you know, you can give me a thumbs up for that one, right? But it just seems that my biggest concern is that my copy of Battlefield 5 clearly states press review copy. 
So why do I have to deal with the same problems that consumers deal with because I am the one who's changing hardware constantly? So yeah, I guess, like I said earlier on in the review, my biggest response to EA and Origin at the moment, I mean, DICE, you've been amazing. You've improved Battlefield 5 when it comes to ray tracing along with Nvidia. But EA and Origin as a whole, the only thing I can really say to you is, fuck you.